What's going on everybody? 5280 Reefer here. Long overdue update. So the tank is now close to four months old. It's like three months and a couple of weeks. Um, a lot has changed. Um, as you guys can see, I have an ATI 48 inch fixture. It's six bulbs, four blue plus, two coral plus. Ended up picking that up for pretty cheap off of a fellow reefer here in Colorado. I was pretty excited about that. Now the legs I actually custom made myself. Um, this is inch thick uh, acrylic and I still need to fill, finish it up. I made some legs on it so it basically just sits on the rim um, and this is just to make sure that it doesn't slide off at any point or any time. I do want to paint it, I'm not sure, either black or, we'll see, probably black to match everything else, honestly. Um, made some custom cheap DIY screen tops with some egg crate and some of the netting I had left over uh, from the Nuvo. It was more than enough for me, so the fish won't jump out. Now. For fish, I have a blonde naso. I think it's a male. Um, he does have streamers and they're stra starting to grow more and more and that's how you can tell if it's a male or female. Is on the tail, um, they'll have these long black streamers that will form with age. Still a juvenile, so uh, it's going to take a little while for those streamers to form, but I can already see them. Um, so I know he's a male for sure. Um, I have the yellow chorus wrasse. I have two Randall's gobies, one male, one female. They are a pair, but I also need to get a pistol shrimp for them. So that way they'll live together in one hole. But usually the male is right there and the female will house in there and sometimes they're together sometimes they're not i don't know maybe they have fights just like normal families i guess um i have a purple tang which you guys saw a couple times probably but they're just not being very nice there it is came out um and i also have a fox face rabbit fish just Plain old fox face, nothing special, just the black, white, and yellow one. Um, I also do have an algae blenny, but he or she tends to hide whenever I come to the tank. Um, so I'm not sure if it's going to pop out or not. Also have, let's see, about eight... Um, Trochus snails, uh, which one you can see right there, and the rest are in the rocks and all sorts of stuff. I should have had 12, but a few of them ended up dying, and the hermits that are in that corner right there ended up taking their shells, and I left the other shells. There's one shell over there and one shell over there, uh, just so if any of the other hermits need to rehouse themselves, they can do that without a problem, which leaves a new shell for a smaller hermit to basically take that. So it's good. Um, I have six pincushion urchins in here. Um, there is two big old ones, and then there is four smaller ones. So you can see one right there you can see one through the rocks over there in the back also you can see one through the rocks right there in the back um, this is definitely one of the bigger ones and there is another one that for some reason likes to come over here but this is the biggest one and you can see it right there it's spines but yeah, for some reason, that one likes to stay in the back. I have two cleaner shrimp. Uh, these shrimp have produced eggs and uh, let out fry. 
I tried to catch it on camera, but I wasn't able to. I had no luck. They were really tiny, and I couldn't get the phone, camera phone to focus in on them. But those are the two shrimp. I have about, I would say, 25-ish hermits in the tank. They are absolutely everywhere. Now, I'm sure all you guys are looking at it and like, hey, 5280, why is your rock green? And you have cyano. So yes, I do have cyano. Um, that's something I'm letting it resolve on its own. Um, that means I have an imbalance of nutrients, which is perfectly fine with me. So, let me tell you a little bit about the imbalance and what's happened to this tank so far since starting it up. So as you guys can see, there's a dead hammer there. There's a frog spawn there with one head missing and it's kind of pissed off. And there's also a Rick, a recording. So what happened to this tank? Well, let's see, once I cycled the tank and once I noticed that the ammonia was zero, nitrites were zero, and my nitrates were about like 20 ppm or something like that. Uh, I wasn't really testing phosphates at all. I didn't think I had the need to since I was phantom feeding every day pellets and mice and all sorts of stuff. Um, once I saw that, I ended up going uh, to Algae Barn, which is actually not too far from me, um, and picking up some uh, sea lettuce. Now, I put the sea lettuce in the refugium and I let it do its thing. I didn't want to do no water changes. I still haven't done a water change on this tank and I'm probably not going to do a water change because uh, I don't see the point to it. Um, but what ended up happening is basically that sea lettuce bottomed out my nutrients in like two days. It literally just sucked up all of the nitrates, all of the phosphates. So I was getting readings of zero for nitrates on my NIOS nitrates test kit and a reading of zero, one, zero to two parts per billion, we'll say of phosphorus on the ULR checker from Hannah. So basically zero. Um, and what it ended up happening is I had, I got dinoflagellates. Yes, the dreaded dinoflagellates. I put it under a microscope and it was the osteoporopsis or something like that. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the word. But basically, um, it's one of the species of dinoflagellates that is actually toxic to fish. And at that point, I did not have my naso or the purple or the fox face. All I had was the chorus wrasse and the two randles gobies. Those guys, the, the two randles were the first fish to go in and then I got the chorus wrasse. So um, basically at that point I was like, well, crap, I need to do something about it. Um, and you guys know me, I love to stick to reef to reef. There's a lot of smart people, a lot of good people there that you can easily talk to and get things figured out. And I've also had dinoflagellates in my Nuvo 40, so I knew with this species of dinoflagellates what I had to do, and that was to increase my nutrients um, and to get a UV sterilizer. So what I ended up doing was I got my stump remover again and uh, just made myself a mix of stump remover with some RODI water, started dosing that daily, uh, I ended up buying some uh, Neofos, which I have a little, basically this is my little workstation. So I ended up buying this Neofos from Brightwells. And if you believe it or not, I ended up using this entire 500 mils in a week because my lighting schedule was at 12 12 so when the lights turned off on the tank my um, Castle H380 turned on for 12 hours and turned off once the lights on the tank turned on um, 
that wasn't going to cut it because that's a $10 bottle and I'm not willing to spend 10 bucks a week just to keep my phosphates up. So what I ended up doing was buying some of this stuff, trisodium phosphate. So I got this off of Amazon. It was like 16 bucks. Uh, you can see there's 227 grams in here. And the solution is pretty crazy. So 1.88 grams of trisodium phosphates, phosphate in one liter of water will produce a stock solution of which if you were to reduce one milliliter of that stock solution to 26 gallons of water volume, you would get a PPM concentration of 0 0.02, which is pretty near perfect. Well, I doubled that up. So that's a 500 mil and I put 1.88 grams of trisodium phosphate in there and filled it up with water and mixed it up. So a one mil of this stock solution will increase 26 gallons of water volume phosphate by um, 0 0.04 ppm, which is perfect. I just dose five mils of that every day into my tank, keeps my phosphates at about 0 .0, 0 0.04 to 0 0.02, somewhere between there. So let's see what else. Um, I ended up beating the dinoflagellates, as you guys can see, there's no dinoflagellates anywhere. There's just the good old nice cyano and all the green stuff that's on my rocks and some of my sand is actually the ova. So what I did not know about ova is that it can actually reproduce with spores. You don't even have to have a piece of the ova leave your sump and go into your display and root itself for it to start growing. So sometimes what it can do is like when you disturb it, uh, what it'll do, it'll release spores and it'll have basically a male spore that releases and a female spore and they'll latch on somewhere and say a male spore latched onto this rock and then a female spore latched onto the same rock close to it, they'll basically form into one actual ulva, so one actual Latuka ulva. And that's why everything's green and it's growing on my power heads as you guys can see. But for me, this is not a deterrent. I don't really mind it because all my fish love it. Um, well, besides the wrasse and the gobies. But the blonde naso, the fox face, the purple, and the algae blenny pick at this all day and they're actually pretty fat. Um, I have a video on uh, reef to reef of my purple tank and you can actually see and like his belly is round. Like he's really fat. Um, so that's how that's. That makes me happy. As long as the fish are happy and they're eating it and they're enjoying it, I'm cool with that. It's free food and free health for them. Let's see. So, after I did start dosing, um, the yellow hammer that I had was not happy at all whatsoever. Um, and it basically melted away. Same thing for one of the heads of the frog spawn. And then this head, I hope it makes it. Its flesh has receded upwards up its base, but it has stopped. And it's actually looking a lot better than it did look. Um, the recording just doesn't give a crap. It's just been happy. It, it doesn't care what happened. It's just been open and doing its own thing. I do have um, coralline starting to grow. There's red and pink and purple coralline growing everywhere, which is a good sign for me that tank is stabilizing. Now, let's go into the sump. So the lights are off right now, but what I ended up doing, because I got a great deal, is I picked up this Reef Octopus INT 110 skimmer for 50 bucks. I mean, that's a deal that you can't pass up. It's an awesome deal. 
Uh, it wasn't broken in any way. Everything works perfectly fine and it's been doing a heck of a job. Um, so the OVA is in there. I'll make sure to get a nighttime shot once the Kessel H380 is on. Uh, that way you guys can see what's actually going on in the sun. But this is my UV sterilizer. It's a uh, Jabo 33 watt or 36 watt, yeah 36 watt not 33. Um, and basically this thing is run off of its own pump which picks up water from my skimmer section, pumps into there and goes into my re return section. Reason why I did that and didn't actually hook it up to my say return line is because I want to run low flow through it so it has the most contact time to kill pathogens, parasites, all that stuff. It's much more efficient to lower the flow, but there also is a minimum. So it's getting about 190 gallons per hour of flow through it, which is optimal for about 36 watts. Um, I have a bag of carbon in here. So basically water overflows into it, passes through that and goes into the return chamber. Now, um, since I do not do water changes, I'm actually dosing uh, alk and calcium through my dose doser. Um, I decided to not use the DDR because it's just a pain in the butt that you have to keep refilling them. That's a gallon. That's much easier to work with. I just made some holes on the top, stuck the tubing straight down. I made sure that the tubing was straight and it goes all the way to the bottom so I don't have to worry about it at all. Um, now, I am dosing 25 mils of calcium and 25 mils of alkalinity on the daily. Um, I'm not sure what's been using it up at that rate, um, but I'm thinking potentially it's the ulva or maybe it's the coralline growth that I'm getting or I'm not sure, but I, I definitely know it's not precipitation because I've got my alkalinity uh, dosing into my skimmer chamber um, and then I have my calcium dosing into my return chamber. And basically by the time the alkalinity gets dosed and gets to the return chamber, it's mixed in already into the water. So I'm not getting precipitation. Um, they're not right next to each other. Um, let's see. Now, now um, I am no longer uh, using any kind of filter floss. Um, because of the ova, uh, the fish do tend to eat it and when they do poop it, poop it out, it's not fully digested. Um, still some like little flakes remain um, and that would clog up my uh, filter floss pretty fast. So uh, I'm thinking I want to try some polyfill next. We'll see how that goes. If it clogs too fast, then whatever, it's fine. Uh, it's pretty cheap and I'll be able to replace it easily every day if need be. But with that aside, let's see. That's pretty much it with the tank. Um, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for it to fully stabilize. I'm going to wait for the cyano to go away on its own. I'm not really worried about the ulva on the sand, like over there in that area. And then there's some in that area in the back area is a little, a little bit as well. Um, it's not growing. It's just, it's there. Um, but I'm pretty sure once I start lowering the nutrients in here, um, I have actually stopped dosing nitrates about two weeks ago um, because that has balanced itself out with the amount I feed and all that other stuff. So my nitrates have, have been stably staying between 15 to 20 ppm, which is amazing for me. I'm perfectly fine with that. But the phosphates, I do still have to daily dose. Um, I have to clean the glass of the aquarium literally every two days. Otherwise, it looks like the tank is cloudy because it'll just form up. So if you look here, 
you can see on the glass that's about two days worth and yeah it pisses me off so I clean it but for this video I didn't clean the sides I just cleaned the front glass so you can see a lot better um, as you guys can see there's tons of pods uh, I have no issues with pods I mean they're everywhere they're all those little dots on the glass you guys know what pods look like so they're literally everywhere all over the glass and the Rass is happy he's gotten a lot bigger I got him when he was about that big and he's at least doubled in size in about two months so I can't wait to see what he's gonna be in two more months maybe a year down the line too um, I know he's gonna get pretty big but pretty much the plan for now is just let the tank stabilize let it do its thing I did start off with basically dead sand because I filled the tank with the sand already in there with just RODI water and then I started adding the salt into the aquarium and brought the salinity up so basically I killed any kind of bacteria that was in the sand the rock was dry rock so it was a fresh start um, and this is pretty much the uglies and I'm okay with that it doesn't bother me at all whatsoever that it looks ugly right now and it is four months in but that's okay because the point is the end goal and the end goal is going to be to have basically all th this whole top section to be filled with SPS and then down here these areas I'm going to have filled with LPS, ZOAs, um, Cyphastrias, Leptosiris, things like that, um, Montes, certain Montes and you guys get the point just basically a mixed reef with SPS dominance on the top and LPS on the bottom um, with these lights they are about nine inches above the water I'm getting at the sand bed about from the corners the corners are gonna be around like 50 60 par um, so basically if you go to like the BRS uh, investigates where they did the the ATI fixtures you can calculate and see how much par I'm getting so basically the average par for my sand bed is um, about a hundred the middle is about 200 plus and the top is high 200s to the high uh, mid 300s at a point like right there which is more than enough for pretty much most SPS so all this stuff right here is going to be in the mid 200s to the 300s range probably down there it's going to be a little bit lower but that's more than enough for most SPS for me at least um, I don't need anything more uh, maybe down the line I will end up getting a uh, Reef Bright uh, XHO fixture just to get a little bit more shimmer into the tank but we'll see there's many options I can also get some Kessel A160s or something like that and put like one here and one here and face it that way into the tank and that way into the tank and get some badass shimmer but we'll see that's something for the future not really don't really need it it's just something for aesthetic purposes but yeah guys this is the tank so far nothing special it's in its ugly phase I already had some losses um, but it's to be expected in a tank and I knew it was too early for me to put in those uh, LPS but I did it anyways because I got a little impatient and I paid the price for it that was a $80 piece no $60 piece for the yellow hammer um, and that was a $40 piece but I didn't fully lose that frog spawn so if I do, it's like the good old saying, if you can burn a hundred dollar bill, then you're ready for reefing. So pretty much I burned 60 bucks right there and 20 bucks right there and hopefully not another 20 to make it a full hundred. Um, and that's my fault for being impatient, knowing that I started off with everything being dry and nothing live and that I have to form these things and give it time. So it was my fault completely. 
Uh, other than that, no fish loss. Nobody has ick. Um, I didn't quarantine this, these fish at all. Um, I bought them from a trusted uh, LFS and probably the only LFS that I'll actually buy fish from. I don't mind paying the extra money to have quarantined fish. I know his quarantining process is great. He had that naso tang for about two months. Um, if you guys know anything about nasos, they do not do well in quarantines. Most of the time they die. Uh, they don't do well with chloroquine phosphate. They do not do well with copper. It, it just sucks. So he just had them for two months. He was the only one that brought ick into my tank, but I'm not too worried about ick because if your fish are fed and they're not stressed out, they're perfectly fine. You don't have to worry about those things. Um, while all the other fish did get quarantining and they were clean, um, once I did bring in the, the naso, I saw a couple of ick spots on my fox face, on my purple and my ras, but they got over it in a week and they haven't had any spots since. Um, so they're happy. They're good. Um, I'm not going to be adding any more fish into the tank because I feel I have everything I want. I really do want a leopard wrasse, but at this point, everybody is happy. Everybody is not, nobody's stressed out. Everybody knows each other and it's just good. So I think this is going to be the fish stock for this, for this tank. I don't want to I love nasos and I love purple tangs. Those are my two favorite fish to have. And yes, I love leopard wrasses, but if I brought in a leopard wrasse and because I do know there's ick in this aquarium, I don't want to risk losing a purple tang or my naso just because I got greedy and wanted a leopard wrasse. So that's a personal choice of mine. No more fish. I'm cool where it is. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. So yeah, guys, this is update for four months into it, I think. Almost getting there. Um, it's ugly. It doesn't look good, but that's okay with me. Rome wasn't built in one day. It takes time. Slowly but surely we'll get there. Alright guys, thanks for sticking around. So like, comment, share, subscribe. See you guys on the next one.